So we have all of our authentication set up. Users can register and log in, and we can redirect the user to different pages when they log in or log out. So let's work on this users page now. So if I just open this up, this page users.view file, these users we see here are currently hard coded into the page here. But when a user logs into the app, we want to grab the real users from our database, from this users node. So let's get that working. So let's open up our store file and jump to the handle auth state changed action. So if the user logs in, we want to trigger an action which will get all of the users from the database. So just before we redirect the user to the users page, I'm gonna trigger a new action. So we need to use the dispatch method to do that. And I'm gonna dispatch an action called Firebase get users. And I'm gonna create that action down here. Firebase get users. So first of all, we need a ref to our database. And the node we wanna grab is just this users node here. So I'll set up a ref here, Firebase DB ref, and the ref is just going to be users, and we want to add a child added hook to this ref. We could do that like this. So dot on, and then child added. So this hook will be fired every time a new user is added underneath this users node in our database, and it'll also be fired once for every child underneath users the first time we connect to the database. So it'll be fired for this user, and then this user, and then this user. And so this will return a snapshot. And we can grab the data from that snapshot with snapshot.val. And I'll stick this in a variable called user details. And I'll just log that out. Save that. Okay, if we look in our console, we can see user details has been logged out three times for each of the users in our database. However, we don't have the user ID for each user here. We're gonna need that to store these users in our state. And if I just log out the snapshot again, save that, and look in the console, so if I open up one of these snapshots, we have this key property and we can see the user ID there because this key property just corresponds to the key of each node that's being returned. So to get our user ID, I'll just stick this in a variable called user ID. We can just use snapshot.key. Okay, so before we can store this user's details in our state, we need somewhere to store it. So I'll create a new object called users and we'll store all of our users within this. Okay, so now we have somewhere to store our users. I'll jump back down to this Firebase get users action. We want to trigger a mutation to add this particular user to this users object in the state. So we're gonna need the commit method for this. So I'll pass that in here and we can commit a new mutation, which we haven't created yet. But I'll call this add user, and we'll pass in a payload to that with the user ID and the user details. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove these console logs, and we'll create this add user mutation now. So I'll jump up to mutations, create a mutation called add user, pass in the state, pass in the payload, and I'll just log out that payload. Okay, we can see that payload being logged out. We have our user ID and our user details for each of those users. So now we need to add this user to this users object in our state. And you might think that we could just do something like this, state.users and then the key, so payload.userID equals payload.userDetails. However, this won't work because if we add an object to 
an object in our state in this way, then Vue.js won't know what's going on with it. The data won't be reactive. So we need to use a special view method instead. So I'm going to delete this line. And to get access to that view method, we need to import view from view. And the method we want to use in this case is the view.set method. And the first parameter is the state property that we want to add data to, which is state.users. The second parameter is the key that we want to write to, which is going to be in this payload at payload.userID. So payload.userID. And the third parameter is the data that we want to put there, which is in payload.userDetails. Okay, so I'll save that. And we can make sure this is working using the Vue.js DevTools. So I'll open up the Vue DevTools, go to the Vuex tab, and we can see our add user mutation being fired here three times. So if I click on the last one, scroll down to state, open up users. Yep, we can see all of our users in there and all their details, email, name, and their online status. Okay, so we have all of our users in our state now but we want to display them on this users page here. So we're going to need to create a getter to do that. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to add a getter to our getters object. And I'm going to call this getter users. And we want to pass in the state to this. And for now, I'll just return all of the users in our state. So I'll just return state.users. So return state.users. Save that. And I'm just going to remove these console logs from our mutation. OK, so now we have this getter, which is getting all of our users. We can make this available within our page users.view component by using map getters, a bit like we've done with map actions and map state. So at the top of our script section, first of all, I need to import map getters from UX and we map our getters within the computed object. So I'm going to add a computed object and I'm going to add dot 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 map getters. We're mapping from the store module and we want to map the users getter. So this users property from our state is now available within this component as if it was just a data property. And since it has the same name, users, as this data property, then we can just get rid of this data function now completely. So I'll save that, and this should hopefully grab the users from our database now. Save that. Yeah, look, we can see Danny, Jim, and Danny. If we look in our database, we have Danny, Jim, and Danny. Okay, now if we look at this v4 loop, our key is currently set to user.id, and that doesn't exist anymore. If we look at our view dev tools, uh, look in our state, our user ID is now the key for each user. And we can get access to this key by just modifying our v4 directive like this. So I'll put user in brackets and just add key. So now we can just set this key property to key. Save that. Okay, so now all of our users in this list have unique keys. And these first two users, Danny and Jim in our list, they're not real users. So I'm actually just gonna delete these. By clicking these little X's. And I'm going to create a couple of new users for the app. So I'm going to jump back to the app and just refresh that. Okay, now we only see Danny, our one user. And I'll log out and I'll register a new user called Jim. And I'll set his email address to jim at test.com. Click register. Okay, we now have another user called Jim. And now I'll log out Jim. And I'll register another user called Lucy. Change her email to 
Lucy at test.com. Click register. Okay, so we now have three different users. If we jump to the Firebase console, you can see their data here. If we jump to the authentication tab, you can see they've been added here as well. Okay, so I'll jump back to our app and I'm going to log Lucy out and I'm going to just log in as me. Now we can currently see ourselves on this list. Uh, we don't really want to see that because we can't really have a chat with ourselves. So let's modify our getter so that it doesn't show us on the list. So I'm going to jump back to the store file to our users getter. And instead of just returning all of our users, state.users, I'm going to create an object called users filtered. And we're going to populate this object only with the users that are not ourselves. And then we'll just return that at the end. So I'll return users filtered. Okay, so how can we populate this object with all of the users that are not ourselves? Well, we can use object.keys and fire that on our users object in the state like this. And this will create an array of all the keys in our users object here. Once we have that array of keys, we can then loop through each of those keys with a for each. And what we can do is, if this key is not equal to our user ID, then we can add this person to this user's filtered object, like this. So if key is not equal to our user ID, which we can get from our state in state user details user ID. So if key is not equal to state.userdetails.user ID, then we want to add this user to this object. So we can just do users filtered square brackets key equals state.users square brackets key. So I'll save that and we should hopefully, oh, we have an error. What have we done? Module build failed. Unexpected token, expected semicolon 9820. So 98. Oh, I forgot to put an equal symbol after this variable name. Save that. Okay, great. So now we can't see ourselves on this list. We just see Jim and Lucy. Okay, so we're currently grabbing all of the users from the database when the app first starts. However, we also want to listen for changes to these users in our database in case somebody logs in and their online status changes to true or vice versa, they log out and this online status changes to false. We need to listen to that so we can update our users here. So we can do that using a child changed hook. So I'm going to jump back to our Firebase get users action. Uh, we have our child added hook here. I'm just going to copy this, paste that below, and I'm going to change this child added hook name to child changed. So this hook will be fired every time the data in one of these children under the database node that we're listening to changes. So if Jim logs in and his online status changes to true, then this hook will be fired. And when that happens, we again want to grab the user's ID user ID of the data that changed and their details. And we want to commit a mutation, which will update the appropriate user in our state. So we still need the user details. We still need the user ID. Well, this time I'll trigger a different mutation called update user. So instead of adding a user to this user object, this mutation will just update an existing user within this user's object. So I'll create this mutation, update user, pass in the state and pass in the payload. And we can use object assign to copy the user's details from this payload into the corresponding user in here. So we can do object.assign, and we're going to be assigning to state.users brackets payload.userid 
And the data we're going to be copying there is in payload.userdetails. Okay, so I'll save that. Let's see if that's working. Okay, we don't have any errors. If I just drag out my Firebase over to the left. Okay, so Jim and Lucy are both offline at the moment. If I change Jim's online status to true in the database, then we should hopefully see it change here. Yep, that's working. And if I set that back to false, we can see it change back to offline. Uh, I'm just going to open up this app in a different browser. So I'll open it in Safari. And I'll log in with Jim on this one. And again, we should see this offline state has changed to online. Yeah, Jim is now online. And if I log Jim out, he's now offline. Okay, so I think we're pretty much done with this users page. In the next video, we're going to grab all of the messages when a user clicks on another user. And we're going to display those messages on this chat page. Make sure you click my head to subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment. And if you want to grab the source code for this app, go to dannys.link slash smackchatcode. And if you want to learn all of the basics of Quasar Framework, Vue.js, Vuex, and Firebase, then check out my full course at dannys.link slash quasar.